Hello, this is Brian Rowe with Mythic MTG Tech, looking at the top 10 modern decks and building a modern gauntlet. This is part of the series that I'm doing over at Mox Boarding House. All the cards from these deck lists and the deck lists are up over there. I'll add a link to the about section here in case you want to go check out that article. If you've got any questions, feel free to leave comments here or over at Mox Boarding House's site. Before I dive into the top five decks though, I want to talk a little bit about preparing for big tournaments and creating a gauntlet. A gauntlet is basically a bunch of decks that you play against in order to figure out if your homebrew is good or the net deck that you're using to figure out how to play them against other decks. It's extremely important for practicing to put together a gauntlet. I recommend getting together with four or five friends, have each friend build a different deck as part of it. In playtesting, I definitely support using some proxies there also, because some of these decks could be rather expensive. Now I'm gonna dive into these four tips for gauntlets. Number one, your deck does not have to beat all of the decks in the gauntlet. You're going to have decks that range from really aggressive to really controlling. You need to know what your good and your bad matchups are and what your outs or chances are against your bad matchups. Learning how to play against each one is more important than trying to find a deck that beats everything. You will likely not find a deck that beats everything, but will have good and bad matchups. Number two, practice with sideboard. This is a huge mistake that I see individuals make. They play game ones, lots of game ones, and then maybe one or two post sideboard games. Over 50% of your games will be post sideboard. Sideboards in modern are extremely powerful. I've got a video that I'm doing off of a patron request on sideboarding specifically and some of the strategies there. But in modern, in legacy, in vintage, it's extremely important to practice those post sideboard games because cards like Choke, Spellskite, and Stony Silence just shut down entire strategies. You have to know how to play around them or what cards you're going to need to put into that sideboard because a certain deck won last week and is likely to be a huge part of the meta at a major tournament the following week. As you're playing, you need to focus on what is your plan? What is your path to victory? I've been playing in Pyromancer decks recently, there's often a great first plan of sculpt your deck, get out the young pyro, have a spell snare or a spell pierce as backup. This works great against kind of the splinter twin control decks. This works horrible against the aggro affinity robot decks. I need more burn when I'm playing against robots. I need more control when I'm playing against combo. It's important to be able to evaluate your opening hands and your first few scries or card selection opportunities with what plan helps me against this deck. Don't just think about doing a few extra points of damage or staying alive. Construct a plan to victory and then play into that. The last thing is it's important to practice mulligan specifically. If you need help with mulligans, feel free to ask the community. This is a hand that I put up on Instagram. Would you keep it if you are on the draw against workshops? Very tough one there. Strong players will give you feedback via online social media. Feel free to tag me, tag other people, ask for their feedback. Getting help from the community is very important. But each hand that you pull up Think about, well, I'm on the play now, I'm going to keep it. And then if I was on the draw against the same matchup, would I still be able to keep it? Your mulligan choices are going to be different depending on if you're on the play or the draw and what your opponent could be doing in their first turn or two and what you're going to have to respond to. Now with this list, I left a lot of things off because I had to narrow it down to five. There's some great decks out there you should definitely be aware of when preparing for the modern tournament. Those Grixis control decks are getting more popular. Merfolk definitely has the ability to win. Living End is boring to play against, but it's very powerful. Young Pyros are top of my list, and I kind of left them off because I focused on them with the world stuff recently. There's also some great decks that either play fair aggro like Wild Nakato or unfair aggro like Bogles with Daybreak Coronet. 
if you're going to make more than five decks, I would look towards some of these strategies to add on to your gauntlet. When I'm looking for what I should be using to construct a gauntlet, MTG Top 8 is one of the places I go. Several of the decks you're going to see are towards the top of these lists. Great resource that's out there for seeing statistically what people are playing. Number five spot here, this is one that I include in virtually every format, is a burn deck. This deck destroys goldfish really quickly. In any format where Lightning Bolt is legal, there is going to be a strong aggro burn deck, and Modern is no exception. What I really like about this particular build is that it's got Eidolons of the Great Rebel in it that just increase that clock speed, and it splashes some white for Boros Charm, which is very, very powerful in the current environment. Four to the face, where the ability to protect your team is amazing. Forked Bolt is also a very nice card that's being played in these. It helps with mana dorks overall. This is the type of deck you really need to be prepared for at any open tournament. The number four spot here, I've got the opposite end of the spectrum, Urzatron. Urzatron goes over the top with crazy big permanents. Ugin and Worm Coil Engine are way up there. Emmercool and Ulamog can even be hard cast in this deck. The deck is crazy fun to play. It's battle cruiser magic at its best. It has some weaknesses though, and if you're playing that more aggressive deck, you need to learn how to deal with a worm coil that's resolved or write that off as a matchup. Your strategies for each end of the spectrum are going to be very different, and when building a gauntlet, you want to make sure that you have both ends of the spectrum available. Number three spot here, I've got Tarmo Twin because it really fits into two different categories. It's an aggressive deck with Tarmogoyfs and it has a Splinter Twin combo. This is the toughest twin variation to play against in my personal opinion because it attacks from so many different angles. In your gauntlet, it gives you a mid-range deck that does a lot of damage backed up by a combo out that you always have to watch for. Learning to play against Twin in this type of an environment is going to keep you alert for Twin in any environment. Next one that I've got here is Collected Company. Other people refer to it as Podless Pod. Calling Cord and Collective Company together have really brought that pod deck back to life with incredible resilience. Lots and lots of utility creatures and a very strong fair game. It's a little bit weak to some of the combo decks. If you're playing a fair deck though, you have to be able to deal with this type of deck. Wonderful deck to play against and it's a lot of fun to play. There's a lot of cool tricks with Gavin Township, with plus one, plus one counters. Amazing fun deck overall. The number one spot here, I've got what is the most difficult aggro deck to deal with right now. It is Affinity or Robots. If you look at the World Championship from two weeks ago, three of the top four players were playing this. It is a powerhouse. The thing about Affinity though, is that you can hate it out with a really strong sideboard hate. You have to decide what part of the meta is this is going to be, how do I beat this? And then what type of opening hands do I need to keep in game two or game three if you've been blown out in game one? Fun aggro deck to play, very difficult to play against, well worth practicing. If you can figure out how to beat this deck right now, it is going to give you a few round wins in a major event. To learn more about gauntlets, I would definitely check out these articles. There's some great writers out there discussing how to play test effectively for major events and what decks you should be working on to beat. If you'd like reoccurring great content for Magic the Gathering or other games, please subscribe to the channel. Thank you. This has been Brian Rowe with Mythic MTG Tech. Thank you to everybody who's over there on Patreon supporting the channel. I greatly appreciate it. Uh, we've got some cool videos coming up this week, including uh, 10 budget EDH lands and hopefully some spoilers for Battle for Zendikar, and maybe even a vintage deck list.